Yeah, I wanted to ask you about this, is that how how affected do you think that the podcast slash comedy landscape has been by there being this new emergence over the last couple of years of all these commentary channels and people who are sort of seeking to take the, the hours and hours and hours that you're doing of content throughout a week and then to consolidate those narratives into these tightly packaged videos. Do you think that that has changed the landscape no. for... And by the way, Brian would be the best person to ask about this because to these to try video and about him being embarrassed and mocked and ridiculed and basically bitched around by Crowder. Actually got to his mum. Do you remember he mentioned that on one pod? My mom called me very upset. She said there's a video that says Steven Crowder has been humiliating you and put you in a cow suit and i said mom and i created that video he never i know i said he's never humiliated me we get along very well if anything it's the opposite and i put myself in that cow suit and then she went she goes why and i go i thought it would be funny i like to push the envelope sometimes we miss and sometimes you miss so for whoever made that brilliant video i didn't see it but apparently you clipped it so it looks oh, no, like i sent I, it to the group chat Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. It, and we all made fun of you. Okay. Well, so whoever, they made somebody made the video, clipped it up. You made my mom cry. You son of a bitch. Good video, though. Congratulations. Funny. No, I, These I, people I, are so I, creative. I, I haven't seen that video. Yeah, somebody made a, an amazing video but where hey. it's just like Brian Callen is being humiliated. Yeah, yeah. But it, but it, they, I, I guess they clipped it in such a way. I, my poor mother. You son of a bitch. Hey, but you, you you're a genius. But, but also, you're a son of a bitch. My mother's eighty two. He actually had to have some real impact in his actual life as well, that sort of stuff. And obviously all the other things, but that was a very, you know, clear example of the podcast commentary scene, you know, having an outsized influence in some of these guys' lives. Oh, for content creators I mean, maybe, like him? No. Because I, I thought of doing this interview because I was watching a video of somebody talking about you and I was like, fuck, I would, I would like to have a conversation with Brian. I should hit him up. Wow. Wow. Look <laughs> at his face. He's, he didn't get him on because he thought he's cool or because he thought he's smart or because he thought it was funny. He only got Callan on because he was watching some, I don't know, comedy enforcement, maybe podcast cringe, two leaders to try, maybe unique video on him. And that's why he got him on. Or Red Bar. Yeah. He, <laughs> look at his face. <laughs> That is so bad. He only got him on because of that. Oh, I feel so bad for Callan, man. But I was like yeah. thinking like, this is kind of strange that I'm not watching the fighter and the kid. I'm watching a video that's breaking down what's right or wrong with the fighter and the kid. Yeah, I... <laughs> what did to say? Look at him. Listen, let's see. I'd love to hear what he has to say about this. I'm very curious. What does Brian Callan have to say about the haters? The hate watchers of the Fire and the Kid who think the Fire and the Kid is a washed up podcast that should be abandoned and that they have one of the most boring shows in the history of podcasts. Let's see what he has to say. I know there are a lot of videos like that. Oh, you avoid this. I just never, I've never watched them. Oh, okay. That's smart. Yeah. I, but, but it's not that it's smart. I just, I, 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 I think it's pretty flattering that there are enough people that hate or love us to make that many videos. Mm. So we had a big impact for a long time. Um, and, and, you know, we used to be so popular now we're not as popular, but, um, that's, that that's, again. that's young people who are being creative. They mm. might be, they might be being negative, but maybe there's a lot to not like. How are him and how are him and Brian friends? How are him and Brian Brendan friends when he has this type of perspective on the hate watchers and the trolls and the detractors? Very reasonable response there. How are him and Brendan friends? Brendan thinks everybody on the subreddit is evil. He probably thinks people like myself and others are probably worse than evil. Yet Brian's like, yeah, what are you, what are you gonna do? I'm kind of annoying. I get it. Maybe there is a lot to criticize, mm. you know, but that never bothers me. But I, you don't wade into that. No, I'm not going to watch it because part of it I might agree with, part of it I don't agree with, part of it might hurt my feelings, part of it might make me laugh, but I, I don't listen to good or bad things said about me. Really? That's a I especially that's, don't that's listen to the good things. That's a lie, by the way. This is something that they repeat ad nauseum because it's one of Rogan's saying. Rogan says stuff like this all the time, so they all repeat it to make themselves feel better. But I don't think this is true. I think they all read and watch everything that's said about them. All of them. All of them. It's impossible not to. They're too 
niche of a celebrity to kind of avoid it. I think if you're like a mainstream celebrity, you know, whatever, on a movie or TV show, I, w- I could believe you if you say you don't watch or listen to things because there's just too much out there. But if you're like a niche, you know, micro celebrity person, you're not that well known anyway. And there's and there happens to be a whole community of people creating content about the stuff that you say and do. Why wouldn't you watch it? It's impossible to avoid it. It's like they all Google their names. They check Google Trends to see why they're trending. That's why they go on certain shows and talk about certain topics. Like it's, it's all a lie. Like they just say the stuff that Rogan says to make them sound professional and you know wise and whatever it's like bro rogan could probably get away with this but you can't like you're not that famous come on because um i don't want that to define me because what will happen is if you say something good about me if i get a good review about something i'm going to try to aim for that the next time Mm. so i get very worried about that i don't listen i don't i don't read comments i don't do any of that because i don't see any positive press x to doubt Activity in it. So like I podcast- just I, I dropped my, my um, uh, thing on Instagram and the po- I heard the comments mm. are very good. I don't care. I, I love it. Thank you. But- who do you who do you hear the comments? Of, like who is this, who is he kidding? He thinks he has a team. Who tells you the comments are good? Do you have like a team of people who relay Instagram comments back to you? To be that sensitive that you need to have people relay back comments to you is fucking insane. But I can't read it because I'll. You'll, I'm too sensitive. I'm going to mm. want more of it. Really? And I can't get attached to likes. I, I can't feel like 10 plus. Years. That's a lie, by the way. He's 60 years old on No Jumper. He's still posting view- videos of himself in his car screaming about things, trying to go viral. He was speaking recently on TFAK about his struggles of going viral. He still wants to be in the game and get his notoriety and be relevant and shit. Like, this is a lie. Like, if you weren't attached to likes, you wouldn't be making those cringy videos where you're trying to have a hot take in your car, like hot take car sessions or whatever nonsense he's done. He's full of shit, personally. And I don't know, and it's not a bad thing to want to be relevant at his age. I personally would never do it. I think I would hang up my hat, given his run in the game and stuff. Like sometimes things are not meant to last forever. You'd had a good run, hang it up. But if you still want to be relevant, you still want to play the game, cool, but don't lie about it. Like you're playing the game. I'm not in it for the light. Like why are you on no jumper then? Years of reading comments on every single thing I put out oh, on you YouTube. Has, oh yeah, everything. Oh, you're out of I will read mind. every single comment on this. <gasps> yeah, you will. Yeah, dude, you're you're a sadist. Why? Everyone does that though. Everyone does that to a certain certain extent. Everyone does that to a certain extent. You read the comments, of course you will. He, what's he gonna do? Post on his Instagram profile and see that red button, see that red mark on his notifications, and just ignore it and not and not click it. Come on, bro. Let's be real. I mean, a masochist. Why would you do that to yourself? Well, you're saying that it could so easily have such an effect on you. I don't really think it's going to have an effect on me. Well, you me. might be inoculate yourself after a while. You're like, you don't. Yeah, so that's what many. I'm saying. I, I would compare it to the fact that, like, a couple of years ago on Twitter, I would almost never see someone dying, and now almost every morning when I'm looking at Twitter, I'm going to yeah. see like murders. I don't like that. Terrible, terrible. Like the yeah. worst things you could ever expect. I don't like that in my brain. Yeah. I don't like it. I know there's a reality to life, but facts are endless. It's, it's hard for me to remember life without seeing all this death on Twitter. I know, Twitter. And, it, and, it, and, and the problem is it takes you away from your best self. Mm. I like the expression, you know, maybe it's my expression. Your best self is clear. <laughs> I like the expression, maybe it's my expression. Brilliant self-fucking-flagellation there, right? I mean, no, brilliant self fucking <laughs> Self <laughs> sucking off. What the fuck was that? Away from your best self. Mm. I like the expression, you know, maybe it's my expression. Your best <laughs> self is clearing his throat in the other room. And, you know, your job is to get to your best self. And you will. I know you will, Adam. I can I know you will. What? Now he's trying to give him lessons. I don't think he needs help from you, brother. Despite all these cancellations, despite him also not being as good as he once was, despite all the people leaving, he's still pretty successful. I don't think he needs your help. I'm not gonna lie. I don't think Adam Twenty Two needs your help. You you have to go through all this insanity. You 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 have to go through you. Your brain likes chaos right now. You I love do. It. Like I, myself. Like and, and people always are telling me like you, you need to look at social media less. You shouldn't be on that shit as soon as you wake up, etc. Like I've always been a person my whole life where all I want. I used to be a person. Who- to be fair, everyone that says that doesn't know what they're doing because he's still pretty successful on social media. So clearly, being plugged in the way he has, and I don't like it because I think No Jumper suffered, but the way that he kind of like 
manipulates and provokes people on purpose. Like even the, the, the Pop Smoke Killer interview, that clearly was to get a reaction and it worked. I think the video last time I checked, it's got like 400,000 views or something. He knows what he's doing. I find it a little bit cringe. I don't like content over everything. I've always hated that COE, you know, approach to podcasting where you purposely create narratives and purposely create beefs that don't really artificial. Like I've always hated that shit, but he does it well. Let's be fair. Let's be objective. He does it well, especially given that No Jumper isn't the platform that it once was. The fact that he still keeps it going and it's still chugging on on licensing and still getting a lot of good views and stuff fair play you know and his decision to fire everybody recently and cut, cut cut down on the shows and just do the podcast it's been a pretty smart decision going forward so he knows what he's doing and i think it's helped because he's kind of plugged in and obviously obsessed with social media like the rest of us and is always on his feed like the rest of us I would wait by the mailbox hey what's going on uche i didn't see you there wagwan uche what's good what's good when i thought that i had a magazine coming yeah yeah because it's the way you deal with your neurosis trying to sit still and do nothing try that sometime you can't do it no it's I'm okay terrible at that. brian was just complaining and crying on the founds of episode the one before about netflix is a joke festival he was just crying and literally contemplating his career and his life just a minute ago and crying about how he's not relevant and he's not involved anymore. And now here he is trying to tell Adam 22 to meditate. Why don't you meditate? Why don't you meditate on the fact that you don't have a special on the fucking streaming platform? Why don't you meditate on that, mate? Why don't you meditate that your career might be over because you didn't have the guts to defend yourself against a rape allegation that was most likely not true? Why don't you, why don't you meditate on that? Come on, bro. Meditate, you know. You need to meditate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but you're going to have to come to that. Mm. And it will come to you if you don't come to it. Mm. And we are living in a time where if you're, you're always, something's always, there's a podcast, there's music, there's, there's, there's your reels, there's the infinite scroll, there's stimulus, 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 stimulus. Mm. And I believe, and that's what I'm, my next special is about, I think that is... Ah, that's why he's on there then. Okay, maybe... Adam only has him on there because he was watching loads of podcast commentary videos on him. But maybe Brian, Brian's on there because he's got a special coming up. Okay, cool. That is as close to the devil as it gets. And it it's is constantly all, being stimulated. It's all noise. Really? And it exactly, Assad. The guy who screamed and threatened Bobby Lee over the phone is telling you to meditate. Exactly. It means nothing. And it takes, and it's all it does is keep you from your true self. And it keeps you from truth and it keeps you from the best version of yourself. So, do I watch these videos? No. But I, I'm glad they're making them, even mm. if they're bad, uh, you know, or even if they're mean, um, because it's 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 young people who are creative mm. and they're finding an audience, and and you know they'll go from that to something else eventually. But you don't feel like you're kind of operating in the dark in terms of like not really being fully aware of what the reaction is publicly to no. the stuff that you're doing. Like no. I want to read the introspective comments that are pointing out why I was annoying at a certain point in the video, or oh Adam did a better job on this one or this was the worst podcast uh, I've seen I, in a long time. I, I, I really want to know. No, I listen to this. First really? of all, I'm, I'm a good person. Second of all, I... Honestly, what Adam said there was pretty correct and on the money. You kind of want to know what your audience kind of think. It, I've always said, and I think that's the main... I think one of the successes I've seen with people who are really successful on social media, I feel like, are the ones who are aware of what people say about them. They don't let it change them, but they know what they say. And maybe they lean into a bit. Maybe they kind of like play the hill. Maybe they lean into things people don't like about them to get more clicks, but they're aware of what the what the climate is, what the temperature is, what the reception is about them, what what is said about them online. Not having no idea what people say about you, having no inclination on what people like or don't like about the things that you do is quite insane. It's quite, and then justifying why you don't listen to your fans or to your viewers or take any feedback as I'm a good person is also maybe very telling because it shows that you're not a good person because you're scared of having a mirror held up in front of your face because that's what the comments are. The comments are basically a mirror because a lot of these people, myself included, sometimes when you watch someone, you, you're not speaking to them. You're just listening to them speak. So you pick up on things that they probably say without even realizing and you get to know them a lot better than they probably would want you to know them. And I think a lot of these guys get worried and scared that when you say things to them in the comments, they're going to be bang on. <laughs> and it's going to be stuff that they don't want to listen to or hear or know about. 
So they're going to just avoid it and pretend it's not there and just put bury their head in the sand. It's like, bro, your content would actually be improved a lot better. Like, T5K, do you remember, do you remember how long it took for them to acknowledge that Brendan interrupts a lot? Do you remember how long it took for them to acknowledge that? It was like a big deal, like... Like, he had to really take stock. Okay, maybe he's into it. And still hasn't changed. It took him so long to acknowledge the fact that the comments were saying, hey, we like your show, but Brendan keeps interrupting and cutting you off and being obnoxious and not giving you time to... Like, it took them so long to recognize just that tiny thing that would have improved the show tenfold a time ago. Or when people used to say to Brendan, don't be so sensitive, lean into the joke, lean into the meme, laugh at yourself a bit more. And only now they're starting to do it a lot more. Come on, bro. You're not. You're not. You're not that good. You're not better than the comments. I mean, everyone, everywhere, all the best. Third, I know who I am. I don't need that validation. I've always. I've always. I. I, I recently found out somebody was mad at me who was a comic, and and I was like, why? And they 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 think that I said something, and I and I was like, I know I didn't, because mm. I like them. <laughs> what kind of explanation is that? If somebody says to you, hey, I didn't like, I heard you said something bad about me. You don't just say, I didn't because I like you. That's not, is that like a narcissistic thing? Why don't you just ask the person, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know I said something bad about you. What did I say? Or maybe I didn't, I don't, I don't remember saying anything bad about you. But if I did, I apologize. He immediately says, no, I don't. No, I didn't say that. You're mistaken. I'm a good guy. It's like, what? Like somebody, I like them. And I know I didn't, and I would never say something publicly. If I didn't like somebody, or I thought their comedy was bad, or whatever, I would never say that publicly, never. What a, this is where I see why him and Brendan are friends now. This sounds a lot like something Brendan would say. I know I'm 255 pounds. I know I look like this stuff doesn't bother me. It hurts my feelings, man. It always has. To say the it least. It always has. To say the least. I don't talk about it. Yeah. Nobody wants me to come on here and talk about, you know, how my feelings are hurt because that's not the masking thing to do. But I'm telling you now, so all you guys know, it hurts my feelings more than you know. Because I don't want to hurt their feelings. And I would say, if I have a problem, I'll say it to your face. But I'm never going to use the microphone. Oh, you say over the phone, like Bobby Lee. You'd threaten him over the phone over some fucking, you know, view source as, view page source as fucking print screen documents that you were given you scream over your you scream over the phone at your friend that you've known for 20 plus years and destroyed that relationship because you thought he was behind the fight on the kids subreddit like what that's what you do say something i regret and if i do say something i regret by accident i always apologize mm. and i apologize for anything i did that i that i if like yeah yeah big up stevie m and big up mrs stevie m as well in the house there's nothing to catch up on i'm just a young black man from london pontificating, bloviating, talking out of my ass about people who are far more successful and richer than me from my tiny, tiny apartment in the depths of London, trying to make myself feel good and trying to keep myself entertained. That's all there is to catch up on. Nothing else, nothing else special here. Just a random dude hating on the internet. <laughs> Big up. If I find out I hurt somebody's feelings or I found out that I did something wrong, I confront that shit right away. Mm. I hate having unfinished business. I can't f***ing stand it. It's interesting you say that because like teeing off on somebody is basically like the best way to build an audience on oh, YouTube at this point, yeah. unfortunately. But yeah. that like a, a video, I, I know like a lot of people who are in the like fledgling stages of them trying to become YouTubers. And a lot of dudes I see will try to make like documentary type videos about different stuff going on in rap. And primarily the reason why the stuff doesn't necessarily seem like it's taken off is usually because it's not negative enough. Like the framing of the title needs to be sinister. That's, it needs to sound like they're unearthing something. Disagree, but this is definitely Adam's modus operandi. This is definitely his lane. He knows how to do that very well. I don't like that type of content. I would never make that. I don't think you need to make that to be successful on, on YouTube. There's plenty of people that don't do that. But to be fair to him, he's very good at that. Thing lizard, horrible. Lizard brain. And, lizard and it's lizard brain. up, but that's just like, realistically, most of the people who I've seen kind of rise to prominence in that field, it's not by just heaping praise. So I would always ask, how is it working out for you? When you're, when you're immersed in that world and you're creating that world, I want to know, come talk to me in 10 years. Tell me how it worked out for you. Tell me what happened. Because that same critic, mm. I promise you, that same critic that you 
you become so good at being will come back and get you when it's your time to try to grow, when it's your time to try to create. Okay. Well, I'd rather be the person in the arena fighting than the person on the outside going, he's a bum. I would say that the the critic is also fighting. Like exactly. the critic, the, the work of a critic is no less important than the person who... No, no, exactly. He, he's that's that, that's probably just an age thing and a generation thing. He's just too old. He's just too old to realize what's happening. He's not in the arena anymore. He's he's probably in the fucking outside watching people's feet, selling nuts and stuff. You know what I mean? Holding people's door, hoping the door open for people. You know, he's not really in the arena anymore, so he's not really aware. So this is a bit of an old man take in his idea, because you know, the commentary community is just as big as the fucking people who are comment who were getting commented on it's just it's sometimes even bigger because i remember what listening to people in the stream chat once say in my fucking stream chat which is a tiny fragment of the entire podcast commentary comedy scene whatever maybe people were saying that they don't even listen to fucking comedy podcasts they just watch other commentary channels talk about those shows so people aren't even watching or listening to these guys outside of too lazy to try podcast cringe comedy enforcement unique that's all they do they just cycle through those shows so <laughs> it's like and that probably might contribute to their numbers dwindling it's a pretty wild trend but that's quite common but brian's just a bit too old to understand that the critic is documented. It's a real critic right and they're cultivated and they've, and they've but even a bad right. critic is probably like in the stages of figuring out how to be a better critic, right? I know, I know, I know people who are music critics for the New York Times. That's different. That's not what I'm talking. And about. and so right, but that's somebody who you would surely say. But that's they're doing something honorable. Yeah, because that's somebody who understands that there's a criteria for art. So there's good art and there's bad art. There's shit. There's shit podcasts. There's great podcasts. There's shit comics. There's great comics. There's hack comics. There's 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 uh there's musicians who rely. Big up Ochi. Let's be clear. You can be wealthy living. Big house and be here in your chat and feel the same way about these dipshits as yourself your monks proper company and appreciate your efforts but that's the thing you guys i think hopefully you guys recognize this and feel this that's the fundamental thing about these guys and hopefully you guys recognize this they have a weird contempt for people most of these stand-up comedians it's honestly odd because i think outside of of all the content creators i watch online from the live streamers or everybody else they're quite similar to low cows in that way. They have a bit of a contempt for the audience. That's why they hate the commentary thing. Because all they want you to do is consume. They want you to go to their shows, buy their tickets, buy their merch, watch their videos. But they don't want to hear from you. They despise it. They despise it. They don't think you're qualified to speak on what they do. Their, their art is just too high level. They turn their nose up at the, comment, at the commentary scene because for them, it's just like as Brendan say, but for the people that are are negative or are on uh, are are on forums and are uh, create troll accounts, I, I view those people the same I'd view a homeless guy critiquing my art or critiquing my set or critiquing a podcast. They do not matter. It literally does not matter to me. I mean, not, because because someone the the per, the person who would go out of their way to create that account or to live in their mom's basement or whatever job they're working could not even fathom the amount of work it takes to pull off something, whether it's a set or a good podcast or a business or merchandise or you know, it's just it it, it does not matter. It does not matter to me. So when people let lets that affect their mood or their life, it's mind boggling. It's crazy to me. What do you care? It'd be the same as if a cat created a profile. That's a good example. Who cares? Even a homeless guy. If a homeless guy was just creating a profile and talking shit, they have, it doesn't matter. They don't respect people at all outside of you know their money and shit. And even that they don't respect. It's interesting because most of their fans, I would say, are like working class, middle class people but they look down on them. It's very, very interesting, very strange dynamic. They need them to pay their mortgage, but then they don't respect them or they don't, you know, respect what they have to say or care about their feedback in any way, shape or form.